Key Stage 3 Level 5 work based on the National Curriculum Level Descriptors. And we're on to Shape and Space. First on this is to draw and measure angles. So first off let's measure these angles. Now really this should be an indication as to what angle because really it could be that angle or that angle so I should have indicated which angle we're going to be looking at so that's better now I've done that so we've got to measure these we need a protractor and we put the centre of the protractor might just good idea if it's up the right way to start with that's better centre of the protractor on the angle and don't just look straight there, count it round, 10, 20, 30, 34 degrees. If you look straight there, sometimes you're tempted to write down the wrong angle. Let's try this one. Put the centre of the protractor on the angle. And as I say, count it round, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100, 110, 120, 126. You very often get people write down the wrong number because they haven't thought it round. 126 degrees this one let's put it this way I think count it round 10 20 30 and this last one we could put it on there or we could put it on there it doesn't really matter as long as we remember to count it round 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 100, almost 110, 109. Measuring an angle. Take a couple of seconds over it just to make sure you use the right numbers. Then of course, drawing angles. So to draw any angle, first off you need a line. It doesn't matter if the line's not horizontal at all. It doesn't have to be. So if we're going to measure 53 degrees, we could measure 50 degrees from one end or from the other. So 53 degrees and label it. Using a pencil would be better rather than a thick felt tip, but this is just showing you. 128 degrees. Which end shall I put it on? I'm going to put it on that end this time. It doesn't matter as long as you make sure you count it round. So 40, 60, 80, 90, 110, 120, 130, 128 is there then. I think I need another felt tip. This one's beginning to go. 72 degrees. Put the protractor on this end. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 72 degrees. 72 degrees. Last one, 166. Put the track on that end again, I think. 40, 70, 90, 130. 150, 160, 166. Right, I think that's enough with that pen. Let's throw it away. I'll pick it up in a minute. To find the air of a triangle. The air of a triangle is half of the base multiplied by the height. We should say the perpendicular to be precise. Half the base times the perpendicular height. Now this is a right angle triangle. So this is the base and this is the perpendicular height. Perpendicular means measured at a right angle. Now there are three ways you could do this. You could say half of 6 is 3 and 3 8 is 24. You could say half of 8 
is 4 and 4 6 is 24 or you could multiply this first and do 6 8 is 48 and half of 48 is 24. I only think of that because it depends on the numbers. If one was even and one was odd, I'd go for halving the even number. If they're both odd, I'd multiply and then halve it afterwards. So it's worth thinking about the three ways. And then lastly, the answer is square centimetres. Now for triangles like this, then you need to know the perpendicular height. So from there to there, measured at right angles, is 4 centimetres. So it's half the base times the perpendicular height. Um, 40, half of 40, 20. I think I'll do it like that this time. What's the area of this triangle? Or, to be more precise, nobody can possibly do it. You must have the base and the perpendicular height, which means to say how far is that point above this line extended. So we need to draw a line straight down here. And know that distance. So the formula is easy. The area of a triangle is half the base times the perpendicular height. But you must have the perpendicular height. If you haven't, then you can't do it. So let's suppose that that was 10 centimetres. Then it would be a half times 10 times 4. A of a triangle, half the base times the perpendicular height is very easy as long as you use it carefully. Find the area of what I call composite shapes. Find the area of a shape like this and a shape like this. When it's a shape like this, then you split it so you find the area of the separate right rectangles and add them together. Now you can split them several ways. You can split it across there, or down there, or both. It's entirely up to you. As long as you've, after you split it, you do know the length and the width of the two rectangles in this case. So this bottom rectangle here is 10 by 5. So its area is 50 square centimetres. The area of this rectangle is, well I don't know that distance, and I don't know that distance, unless I look very carefully. If the whole of that is 8, and that is 5, then this bit here must be 3. If the whole of this is 10, and this part is 6, 10, 6, this must be 4. So the area of this bit is 3 times 4. So we can split a shape, or cut it up if you like, into rectangles, and then find the area of the separate rectangles and add them together. Let's have a look at this one. I could cut it there and there and have 1, 2, 3 rectangles. There are several ways I could do it. The area of this rectangle is going to be 3 multiplied by, how far is it from there to there? Well the whole of that is 8, that is 3, so from there to there is 5, so that is the area of that part. The area of this is 3 times whatever that is. Well that bit's 7, that bit's 3, that bit's 4. So this must be 7 plus 3 plus 4, which is 14. So 3 14s, 42. 57. I call them composite shapes because they compose of different shapes stuck together. So if you can split a shape into rectangles and find the area of the separate rectangles, add it together, you've got the area of the shape. This does also ask for the perimeter. The perimeter is the distance around the outside. 